Mm-hmm. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to our supporter night D&D one-shots. Today, I, we have just a, sing- a singular player, Mr. The Illustrious Tobias of Tantalus, who can be found at twitch.tv slash uh, uh, Tantalus Studios, I believe. And uh, found on YouTube under the moniker Just Playing Games. Uh, today, we have, I remember, I, one of the pieces of feedback I got after our last one-shot was the measured absence of any type of role. And so this, today, is not a combat encounter. Today is a battle of intrigue, and given the fact that Reed here is going to be playing a rogue, I am interested in how he is going to end up playing this. So let me just... Uh, with my, let me just pull up a, your prior names, names, threads. Let me double check. Let's just pull up your character sheet so I have everything on lock just in case. All right, ready. So, to set the scene. Uh, a reminder for all of the folks, ladies and gentlemen at home, we do have a little bit of an addendum here as well in terms of how the board, this current board works. Reed, I take it that you can see the lines on the board, like the, the grid, relatively comfortably? Uh, yes, yes. Good. So we're going to, uh, I take it that you are also going to want to use your green character from last campaign as your representation. Unless you I, pick a different one. Uh, was there a red guy? There was a red girl, yeah. Actually. Oh, there. I don't know if the girl word. Hmm. Or maybe I should just be Professor Plum because he's all dark and shady. <laughs> Professor Plum. I never thought I would say that sentence. <laughs> it's funny. Ah. Uh. Okay. I mean, I, I guess any of them could be the murderer in the game, really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Um, all right. So here, uh, just to get, just to do some governing rules, just so you and the folks at home know everything that's important. White spaces are walls. Uh, uh, white spaces are walls. If it is if it is inside of a white space, it is considered an interior. If it is outside of a white space, it is considered an exterior. All right. Uh, black spaces are um, these. This these are uh, things like bars, tables, pianos, uh, you know, barrels, things of that nature. They're, they're the furniture. Yes, it's the furniture. Things that, you know, are obstruct your path, but you can vault over if you so choose to. Yeah. Lastly, um, uh, let me think anything else. Uh, the way movement works when we're using the grid is thus. Every space is 10 meters. Now, is this being a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eighty meter, or rather thirty, or, or like instead of meters, it's going to be ten feet. Each square is ten feet. Now, is there be, this being an eighty foot tavern from end to end absurd? Yes, but I it is, um, just for um management of space and simplicity of calculating things on my end each square is 10 feet just to keep shit simple okay lastly uh to reiterate um all npcs have predefined damage roll numbers health uh, health points um armor rolls and attack roll um when you when you roll to hit them, 
you either you either roll higher than their AC or you don't. There is no there is no there isn't uh that's there isn't a like there's a roll to hit and either you do or you don't. There is no rolls on the NPC side in regards to like rolling to dodge or anything like that. It is just to simplify rolls to make my life easier. So I'm just reiterating that. Lastly, uh, presume every attack, every time I tell you to roll for damage, you are using the preferred damage roll for your class and, and attack, unless otherwise stated. If I, I will, if you ask to do something or you ask uh, to do an action, that will usually, like, you will, like, anytime I tell you to roll, it will usually be for damage, unless I otherwise state what you should roll for. And lastly, this is setting. This takes place within the confines of the world of the Elder Scrolls. Yes, I know that in Dungeons and Dragons there are races and stuff that are not reflected in the Elder Scrolls. Um, we're just not gonna. We're just not gonna sweat that. You know, if you are a if you are a dwarf, we can just the people will just think you're, I don't know, a Nord with dwarfism. Or if you're a if you're a, if you're a if you're a a halfling, people will think you're a Breton with dwarfism or something like that. I don't know. We'll just we'll like it. Just it, it's not. It's I'm not pressed on it. <laughs> so, with that, let me set the scene. You have been tasked. Uh, your uh, Rayloaf Skywind has been tapped by the Gray Fox of Cyrodiil to under uh, uh, as a as a representative of the thieves guild to steal the ledger of this inn this is one of the like the the the, the snowy pint is one of the premier inns in bruma and has been growing in popularity as of late with this, they have the, the the Snowy Pines owner, the barkeep, Marcello, has a a red guard a red a red guardian man, has unfortunately not paid his his dues. He's paid his dues to the count to the count of Bruma, but he hasn't necessarily paid his dues to the Thieves Guild. Thieves Guild doesn't necessarily have an idea of what he can and cannot pay, and it's your job to figure that out by either getting getting the information from the ledger or stealing it wholesale. Marcelo doesn't know this is happening. He's just gotten into a seemingly wonderful stroke of fortune, being able to buy a buy a defunct pub in Bruma for cheap and spontaneously having lots of different customers. But you don't need to care about that. All you need to do is find that ledger. And you showed up here during a busy tavern night on Sundas of on Sundas of First Fall. And we begin. Where would you like to start? You, 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 your player begins here at the doorway. Right. So it's my just... my goal is, is just to learn the amount he actually owes, or your your job is to find the ledger, whether that and whether that and, and preferably to be able to get it, to get it out of the tavern and, and return it back to your handler in the Imperial City. You don't know where it's stored. You don't know, you know, where it could be. What all you do know is, is, is that the, the, the tavern is packed. There are plenty of regulars and, and people who, who, who are there every night and and the entire tavern, with the exception of behind the bar, is up is yours to explore. Uh, 
Okay, so I think I might start uh, just sitting down uh, at the bar and getting a drink. All right. You, you, you move three spaces. And you want to order a drink? Marcelo says, Good day, my friend. What can I get for you? We have hot and brew mead. We have Brockbry Reserve just imported across the border in Skyrim. A little more pricey given we had to smuggle it out of Stormcloak territory, but we're but we've got a great selection of meads, ales, and beers for you today. I even have some Sujama. I I bought for cheap off of some uh, Dark Elven refugees. Well, I am rather new in new in town. So, what is the local specialty, if I might ask? What ah. what's good here better than other parts? Well, I I used to say wine. We would get a lovely reserve out from Choral, but you know, if, you, you, the wineries are still. Uh, one of the newest reserves coming out of the wineries of both Choral and South from Leowin are not as stellar as before the war, 30 years ago. But we do have the, we, while it's not a local specialty, we are quite, we, we do have, we do have a very, very nice, uh, uh, fourth era, uh, 185th year Blackbriar Mead if you would be so inclined. One of the one of the pints from the earlier days of the meteries over there. You thinking? Oh, hardly sounds hardly sounds like I can pass that up. What would something like that run me? Oh, well, given its age and the pains that had to be gotten to get it out of Stormcloak territory, I'd say about 75 gold. A, a bargain, to be certain. Your average, your average, the average flask, an average, uh, an average pint of this would normally go for 150 gold. But... Given you are new in town, and I am nothing if not a gentleman and amenable to new members of our fair city, please consider this a kindly gesture from you to me, from me to you. Believe I shall. I'm trying to look at my character. I'm like, how much gold do I actually have? <laughs> I'm like, was that preset or I don't know. How much gold do you have to eat your character? I don't see any. Uh, in my inventory, it says I have 10 gold. <laughs> Damn. All right. But, All right. but that, that's just like automatic setup. I don't know. How do you respond? Well, unfortunately, I do seem to be a little short of a 75. As a freelance freelance worker, get paid by the job, you know how it is. Oh, freelance worker. You wouldn't, you wouldn't happen to be any good with a silver tongue, would you? With, with, with a what? A silver tongue. Oh. Oh, I've been known to persuade the odd man or woman from time to time. I'll tell you what, I'll make you a deal. I'll give you, I'll give you five free drinks of whatever you want tonight. If you can go over to that table over yonder. And get that, and get that ruffian over there to pay his bar tab. He has come in every single night 
for the last two weeks, and he has not paid his tab. Easily, his tab is his tab is easily in the thousands of gold at this point, and and a few and a few drinks from you, giving you a few drinks and some quiet hospitality is more is is more than enough to cover that. What do you say? If you can convince him to pay up his tab or at least part of his tab, I would be more than happy to. Be, I, you, you're more than happy to drink for, for free tonight. Um, if I look over, can I sum up what this individual looks like that he's talking about? Well, an insight check. Okay. Uh, roll a d. Roll a d twenty. Yeah. What is my insight? Insight is plus one, and that's an eleven. That's a twelve. Right. That checks. You look up. You look suddenly over your shoulder, and you see around a table. You see, uh, three. You see three uh people, um, behind you, and you see a a ruffian with a big great sword on his with it with a great sword on his back, drinking heavily back to back to back. You recall seeing him come in when you came in and he was downing at least his second drink since you started your conversation with Marcelo the barkeep. You identify the red the the, the, the um this as the uh ruffian. Okay. Try to think of what I could what I could say to the man. Oh, oh, Mar Marcelo uh, is asking, like, so do you accept? I think I might be able to handle that. Already, wonderful, food. wonderful. If you need, if, if if you need, if things remember, if things go south, it's 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 your it's your it's your ass. I anything that gets broken in here is going to cost a pretty penny to replace everything. So, just so so, try not to instigate a fight. I beg of you. Otherwise, I will have to call the guard. Right, of course. <laughs> Sit there and think, yeah, I'm like, I'm not sure what to say to the ruffian. Even though I have good persuasion, I could probably do it, but I'm like, what's my actual argument? Don't overthink it. All right, I'm I'm gonna wander over to the table then. All right, you turn and you uh, and come up immediately. The ruffian, this the outlaw, and the and what who appears to be a a a, a, a mage you recognize. The sigil of the Cyanid of the of the of the College of Whispers on it. My bad. Who they must be a dropout of said college. They they immediately turn to you, sizing you up, and the outlaw, the green one, says, "Can we help you, toothpick? <laughs> what do you want, elf?" The is what the what the ruffian says to you. Uh, 
Oh, I'm just new in new in town, looking to understand some local charm, and you fellows seem quite colorful your, yourselves. I just have to start somewhere. What is good, my gentlemen? The uh, outlaw. The outlaw says, "Ah." Ah. You talk funny. What do you want? And then the and then the ruffian then says, "Oh, oh, quiet, my friend. He is roaring drunk. Come drink with us, elf. I will show you what a true." Son of Skyrim can do to have hospitality and bring all a good time. <laughs> it, he then gra grabs both you and his ranger counterpart and says, Tonight we will be fat, we will drink until we are found tomorrow morning hanging off the walls. In inebriated joy, nursing our hangovers <laughs> with wine pussy. And then he let little kid looks out a big bellowing laugh <laughs> and immediately downed another pint. You look back oh, at that's Marcello, so Mar you look back at Marcello and he's just has this like look of abject hatred as this ruffian. <laughs> Downs in another pint of liquor. As he goes back to just shaking his head and like cleaning a glass. Well, that sounds like quite the hearty endeavor. Though, I may have to. Dang, why well, blank another word? May have to moderate myself. Self a bit, I do seem to be a little light of a coin at at the moment. But I suppose I might be able to partake in a few drinks. The ruffian then says, Oh, you're short on coin. Oh, this I know how we can help. It's at that point that the uh ruffian casts silence. On the on the, uh, the that dropout drops cast silence on the ruffian to to get him to shut up. He's still babbling like he's still talking. He's too drunk to even notice. He's still talking like what sound is coming out of his mouth, but you don't hear anything, even though you're like you can see his lips moving. Oh, why stop now? I was just getting intrigued. He's the the ruffian. Then says, "Wait, sorry about that." The ruffian then says, "Like look, like stops, makes a noise of the sound, a sound of his voice, and then he looks at the dropout and starts waving his his arms and hands like, like." Obviously angry or upset in some way, shape, or form, and uh, the uh, dropout just proceeds to roll their eyes and go back to their wine. Uh. I I lean in a little closer in in the table uh, to to the others in the group. Okay. Uh, I I say all right. Cards on the table. 
I was I was told this one here has racked up quite a hefty sum in debts. And I'm And I don't suppose there's a way a pers I don't know if they What am I trying to say? Now I'm assuming those debts those debts are his alone. You You all seem like you seem like reasonable gentlemen. The outlaw the ranger asked You're a mercenary, aren't you? What's what's Marcello offering you? To come over here. To, th to a party of three visibly mercenaries ourselves and collect our moron uh, our, our moron our, our resident morons hefty bar debt Well, at present, he was only offering some free free drinks for the night, though I feel I may be able to persuade him to sweeten the deal if need be. The, the dropout proceeds to speak up. They haven't said a single thing this entire time. Listen, elf. We would be willing to offer you a, we to offer a counter. The ranger the the outlaw then looks at the dropout and says like it gives him a and gives him a look and the dropout then says we it would benefit us if you could potentially start a distraction for us Now, we'd be more than happy to compensate you for our time, and in fact, we would be more than happy to let you get your free drinks as thanks. Take our invalid friend here. He is obviously a liability to us. And we under, I understand being working job to job. So if you could be so kind as to teach our friend a lesson in regards to not paying the tab, we would not necessarily intervene. I'm just talking, you can go read. <laughs> oh. If I may... By the way, if the, I may, the, uh, may... the uh, outlaw, like the uh, ruffian, is currently, like, knocking back me. He's, like, not hearing any of this conversation. <laughs> He's just fucking gone. Yeah, I'm trying to think how to say what I want to say. Take your time.
by the way, uh, black, what, like, when they're next to, like, walls like this are usually doors. Okay. Right. While you're thinking, I'm gonna go grab something. I'll be right back. Okay. I'm sorry about that. What would you like to say? Now, now truly, I think this all comes down to a matter of ec economics, really. I, I, I look at the ruffian trying to actually get his attention for this next part. Oh. Roll, a, roll a performance check. <laughs> uh, oh, that's a four plus three. That's a seven. Uh, you <laughs> wave your hand in front of his face. Nothing. You're just like you, and he, and 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 he's literally just like, go on, go on, go on. Well, I was going to explain how not paying a a tab literally means less money for the bar, which means they won't. It, eventually won't be able to supply the drinks anymore. And... Why don't you say that? What? Do a persuasion check. Let's see if let's <laughs> let's do a persuasion check. Okay, hopefully this goes better. I'm not better at persuasion. Uh twelve plus five is a seventeen. That path is he's like no this bar has all the good data. <laughs> no. And he says, come my friends. We must act fast. <laughs> we must go to a new bar. The outlaw then is like, you dumb mother. Don't <laughs> it. Before they, either of their friends can say anything, the ruffian speeds out the door, knocking the door on its hinges, off its hinges, and bowing into the night. You'd hear Marcella cuss, motherfucker! Son of a- <laughs> I, I, I give, I, I give I like a that, wince have... back to the barkeep. Fucking door imported from Alamor. Do you know how much those snotty fucking high elves charge me for that shit? <laughs> I I look up. I, it, it looks like the door is is fine. It just needs to be put back on its hinges. I can do that later. I think. You got that better. <laughs> Didn't I tell you no fucking property damage? Shit. <laughs> He then turns, he then turns and goes fiddling in some cabinets to refill a cake. You then, the, uh, the, the rough, the outlaw then turns to you with his head in his hands and just like. That wasn't an adequate distraction. God, he's a moron. I promised his mother I'd take him with us. 
Why did we take this fucking job? He's only good at Unga Bunga. I'm never working with a fucking Nord again. The outlaw for reference, ladies and gentlemen, is the Brett. And the um, mage is a and the mage is a uh, uh, dark elf. So the the dropout then says, "Well, I know I said I'd pay you to cause the distraction. Since you did your job for so little, I was I was hoping you would just get into a fight with him." And now I have to go find him. Or rather, my compatriot does. The outlaws just start yelling obscenities and leaves, following his friend to the night to, to, to try and find him. They will Admittedly, be Admittedly, that could have gone better. It could have. The drop, the drop, the... the... The dropout then looks at you and says, Why are you actually here? I, I, I see your cloak, your attire, your dress. I'm a, I, I, I have, I, before I, before I tried and failed to the College of Whispers, I was in Hughes, I lived in Hughes Bay. the ancestral home of the Hammerfell Thieves Guild. I, would re I recognize a thief's attire any day. Why are you a Thieves Guild operative any day of the week? Why are you here, actually? Uh, I'd I lower my voice to a bit more of a whisper. Like, I was actually hired to try to get the ledger of all the tabs in in the bar. Mm. But of course, I don't even know where to begin looking at this point I had hoped by bringing up the topic of tabs and ledgers I might have maybe start one game to pull it out somehow and yeah this led to that as it goes tell you what You have effectively bungled a job that me and my compatriots were on. I'll make you a deal. And we'll make it a fine book math contract. So you at least have the insurance. Well, I always have the insurances that you won't stab me in the back. And you have the insurance that I won't do thus. Tonight was is the last night we had to finish this job. And before I tell you what the nature of it was and what I need from you, I want to, I would like to, I would like you to enter a temporary magical pact with me as to make sure mutually no, you won't tell a soul of what happened, uh, of what happened uh, here and vice versa. Well, as as you said, we we're all thieves here. I have no trouble with that. All right? You you agree? Indeed. You and the dark elf shake hands, and two equal sigils appear on the on the, on the back of both hands that were that were shaken. The dropout then says to you. All right. As he continue, as he can, as he continues to sip his wine, and a low voice says, 
We are on a mission from the Vigilant of Stendar. The Vigilant of Stendar are, did not want to come themselves, mainly because the self-righteous pricks aren't capable of subterfuge in the slightest. So they contracted it out to us to see if there was something going on with the Frosty Pond. Snowy Pond. I forget the name of the tavern. My bad. Snowy Pond. They were concerned that the meteoric rise of Marcello's uh, new venture was odd. So we are here to sort of gather intel and such things out. We have been here every night watching people come and go, and as far as we can tell, it is just a normal bar. The only thing that we have been kind of unable to figure out is everything looks normal. Everything looks fine. It looks like a normal little above the bar, above the, uh, above the table bar. <laughs> above the, the bar? Above the bar. Uh, the <laughs> only plate, in fact, my, uh, outlaw compatriot was able to even get into the upper floor where uh, Marcelo lives. Nothing. Everything looked normal. The only place that we haven't been able to get into is a closed off courtyard that cannot be that cannot be accessed from above or even be above below or over a wall the only access point is a locked is a locked door in the back of the bar and we've been unable and we have been patently unable to get back there because despite marcello's ability to you know but despite dealing with multiple customers at once, he, he is razor, he is razor, uh, he's razor sharp. One fool we paid to do this early on who was, who did not want to make a magic match with me. We paid a sum of gold to try and get into it. The guards were called in a matter of minutes, and he was taken away before he could even mix the lock. I don't know what we're going to. Do. I don't know what we're going to do next, but we need to get behind that door. If there is anything that, if we don't get something that the vigilants care about, we are not getting paid. And given the amount of beer my contemporary drinks and the provisions needed for traveling from city to city divines know we can use the money so i given you your roguish charm i presume you are competent in lock picking Uh, I dabble. I say, and I kind of pour a little toothpick or something between my fingers. <laughs> He's like, he, the, uh, the, the dropout then says, okay. I am going to cause a distraction. And I need you to make a beeline for that door. And so we're going to go into turn-based maybe okay so we're going to have ncc's take their turn first okay okay the dropout is going to pass by you and order a drink marcello comes up to him and says that and says and, and and says i would like i would like to buy a full i would like to buy a, I would like to buy a hot toddy. A hot toddy is, um, no, uh, a, a, no, a rabbit skull. I'd like to buy a rabbit skull. 
a round skull is a 17th century drink that is basically um, beer, nutmeg, and cream stirred with a hot cast iron rod. Is one of the earliest examples of a uh, cocktail. For just for the folks at home, little fun little lore tidbit for you. Um, Marcelo was like, Marcel says, I have no reason to give you any more liquor until I, until I, until like until I am reimbursed for your friend's bar tab. The, the uh, dropout. I was wondering why didn't you just cut him off? The dropout then said, flashes some gold and says, "Just because my invalid friend is incapable of paying, does not mean I am." He is my compatriot's brother. We are with him because not be I, I am very much just a work counterpart. I'm gonna roll real quick for the character. He his persuasion passes, and uh, Marcel's like, "All right," and begins to make the drink in front. The. Uh, uh, as he as as Marcelo goes to start stirring the hot toddy after adding everything, the droplet says, "Oh no no no! Allow me!" and has fire splat from his hands. The the uh, mug explodes in Marcelo's face, uh, and that is the end of the NPC turn. He's 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 got his hands in his eyes, screaming. You son of a bitch. And now it's your turn. What do you want to do as far as movement? Um, okay, so I'm trying to get to a courtyard outside. It's this door right here. there. Okay. It, it's locked. Uh, how much movement do I have? 30, but I can. You can move uh, three bonus squares. action dash. You can move. You can move three squares. Yeah. And you can move in diagonally is counted. Yeah, so I can get in front of the door. All right. You are now in front of the door. Um, can I glance oh. behind me real quick, see if, if, oh. if these other guys are paying me any attention? Roll insight check. Boo, 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 boo. That's an 11, 12. Yeah, that hits. That hits. Um, uh, the, the other uh, civilian patrons are completely enamored with what's going on. The dropout is, you know, handing, is like literally handing like, like a blanket out of his pulp to try and help, uh, Marcelo, like, wipe the stuff off his face. He's saying, you blasted dark elf! <laughs> That's why your mountain blew uh, up. Alright, I'm, I'm just gonna kind of, like, lean against the door and start trying to pick the lock. Roll roll a lockpick. Roll a, uh, just roll a dice and roll a dice like for a lockpick. Well, a sleight of hand. Sleight of hand. Check. Sleight of hand. Uh, th that's still 20, yeah? Oh, that uh, hits. That that's is... a 12. That hit. That hit. You're good. The well, door... I'm, I'm like, I also have a plus 6 in sleight of hand, so... <laughs> the door... That was your action. The door opens. Do you want to do it? Do you want to like continue moving with your bonus action? Uh, yeah. And right. slip inside there. Yep, and the door closes behind you. All right. Before you, you see a uh, a dead civilian laying on top of a trap door. You see that you see a an, an, imper an imperial man with his uh, heart cut out. Uh, 
laying on top of a trap door. Okay, do I have to... I'm like, I think that... All the actions I can do... Like, it would, it would be another action to try to shove him to the side and open the door, yeah. Um... What, what, like, like turn-based is over now. You can just do that. Oh, okay, okay. Like, with the door closing and out of sight of everyone, you can now just move, act freely again. Uh, yeah, I'm just... I just look at him like... Well, that's unfortunate. I just kind of shove him to the side... All right, and you and, and, head and you head yeah. down. So uh, I'm gonna yep. pause the recording real quick, everyone. Retake this as a second to go uh, pee and take care of some stuff. I am going to set up the uh, next section. All right, welcome back, everybody. As excuse me, let me just get untangled my wires here. Damn it! Uh, as Rayloff descends into the basement. He gets hit immediately with a rancid smell. As he comes down the ladder, he you come across what is could be best described as some kind of crypt? Ritual space? Roll an inside check. Uh, uh, that is a ten. You start, you start, you, you, you look around and see multiple dead bodies, an altar between four, between four pillars that reach all the way to the ceiling and, and crates lining the wall. You said you, then you, but in, within the drip, drip, drip echoiness of the poorly lit basement, but just lit enough to sort of see everything, you hear a gnawing in the, in the, in the squelching of meat, as if something is, is gnawing on things. Uh, roll a second insight check. Uh, that's a three. You see something hunkering in the darkness, but you can't make out what it is. Alright, what do you want to do? Um, I'm going to take a peek in the crates. Okay. Your character moves over here and look in, opens one of the crates. Inside the crates is mead, uh, bar towel, typical things that you would expect a tavern to need. You see new blankets, but then you and then you look at other ones and you see weird uh, occult memorabilia, items, relics of some sort. Nothing that you know is significant in regards to magical power, but definitely effigies of some sort of uh, foul danger god. Um, I'm gonna pocket a couple of the occult items okay. just to figure out what's going on later. Alright. You, uh, roll an, uh, roll an insight check. Two, two, two. That's better. That's an 18. Nice. Now that you are moved away from the like from this ledge, you can see you and see past and can see the altar. You see not only the ledger sitting on the altar in front of you, you also see a humanoid bent over eating a corpse. The humanoid has horns and gray skin. It's a daedra. Daedra, for those who are unaware, it are the denizens of 
Uh, do a um. Do a uh, history check. A witch. History. Uh, what is my history? That's a plus one. Or hold on, before you before you roll it, before you roll it, hold on. Um, uh, is Arcan gonna be a what you prefer here or history? Um, I mean, history and Arcana are the same for me. I, I say Arcana. I say Arcana because it, it isn't. It's like more like Arcana, arcane knowledge. Roll an Arcana, Ar, Ar, Arcana check. So re-roll and roll an Arcana check. Oh, now, that, it wasn't, that's a natural it, one. It wasn't in the <laughs> thing, so it doesn't count. Roll it again. Okay. Uh, that's a ten. Okay, that 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 hits. Uh. You uh, recall that uh, Daedra, routine, uh, well, specifically ones that exist outside of the mortal, like outside of Oblivion, are usually tied to or are, like are part of clans that are usually pledged to very specific uh, Daedra princes. And you uh, roll an insight check, roll an insight and an Arcana check. So two rolls. Mm -hmm. All right. Insight is nine. Okay. Arcana is thirteen. Um. You make out. You make out. Uh. Some kind of four-legged creature, like tattooed into the skin of the Dramora. Uh, and you recall that the that the sigil of the dog when it released to Deja is the uh, um, identifier of Kalavik. It's vile. The Deja Prince of bargains, luck, and uh, corrupt dealing. Okay. Uh, do a, if you could do one more check for me, which should be a uh, let's say survival. Do a survival check. Actually, survival. um, actually, not a survival check. Do me a solid. And just roll a dice on it, just an intelligence, like just to check, like with an intelligence modifier, or no, a wisdom modifier, a wisdom modifier. Dumb, that's a plus one. So that will be a six. Mm. You start, you start thinking. You know, you you start thinking. You uh hard, and some time passes while you're lost in thought thinking about put it, trying to put two and two together. But before you can kind of come to any realizations, uh, the uh, Dramora starts sniffing in the air. He's like, mortal. And not the Red Guard doll. He starts, he starts like looking around. What do you want to do? He hasn't seen you um, yet. I'm gonna, but he's looking. He, he'll yeah, catch I'm... you shortly. I'm. I'm gonna. Uh, crouch down and hide, and try to go uh, back up. Let's to... do a stealth check. Uh, that is a twenty-one. All right, he you you slink into the darkness behind you slink into the darkness behind this pillar. He turns around despite him constantly turning around, he can't see you. 
uh, Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. He goes back to eating the corpse in front of him. All right, I'm going to try to sneak back up to the trap door. Even though the ledger is right is, is right behind is 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 on the is on the uh, altar. Oh, I I missed that you had said that. I did say okay, that. Yeah. I apologize. <laughs> yeah, the old the, the it's right here. Yeah, I, I I'm gonna try to sneak up and and grab that then. All right. You are care. You uh, while stealthed, you move one. Uh, let's what like which which squares do you want to move? Do you want you know there is a dead body here and uh, that you'd have to step over. Um, I'll take a little just, extra time and just go go around gonna, the dead body. Yeah, we're gonna do turn based mode. So we're gonna go one, two, three. Or which way do you want to go? Do you want to go this way or do you want to go this way? Um, go let's go to right? the... Let's go to the outside of the room there. One, two, three. His turn. Uh, I'm going to do the roll. Um... He does. He does not. Uh, he 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 is not perturbed. Your turn again. All right. I'm gonna sneak up to the altar and see if I can grab the ledger. Roll stealth check as you pick it up. Uh, Twelve. So it's a sixteen. You pick up the ledger and stow it away in your cloak. The Dramora is none the wiser. Your turn again. What do you want to do? Um. Okay, now is there anything else I need to worry about? Or do, do I just sneak back up? You, you, can, you can book it out of the tavern at this point if you want. Well, I don't want to book it per per se. I still like to sneak out, at least out of this room. So. Okay. Alright, so back the way you came? Yeah, yeah. One, two, three. Alright, stealth check. Boop, boop, boop. Uh, that's You're a natural good. 20. Alright, so I take it you want to go back up? Yeah. We're going to pause the recorder real quick so I can put Humpty Dumpty back together again. <laughs> As you come back up, uh, you hear commotion on the other side of the door. The door's still unlocked from when you uh, broke the lock. Uh, your call, what to do now? There's, two, there's only the way back and only the way forward. Yeah, I'm going to, like, slowly creak the door open to see if anyone is, is watching, if I can just, like, slip back through. Roll a stealth the door. and an insight check. Um, stealth is plus six. That's a 15. Okay. Insight is a... Natural 20. Nice. You sneak through the door and see a scene unfolding in front of you. You see the dropout currently being held by two guards while the barkeep is berating, I want you to throw this man in fucking prison. Meanwhile, the civilians are, are over here are completely plastered watching this unfold. Completely uh, on a, like completely not focused at all on the door to their left. And due to the 
nature of the bar from where they're standing they the guards are not capable of, are able to see you from this door and even then they don't care as far as you're they they're concerned you're just an you're an employee they don't give a shit right so i'm just going to slip back out then all right What next? Um, I'm gonna lean against the the wall and just kind of be like, "Really, it seems a lot of ruckus for a bit of a spilled drink." The uh, Marcelo turns around and says, "There is glass in my nasal canal." Oh, uh, there, there are healers about, I'm sure. You run a fine business establishment here. I'm sure you can afford a penny or two. I'm sorry. Didn't I, like, didn't I tell you to get money from these two people, from these people? They haven't paid their bar tab and two of them ran off into the night. No, no. This guy can either pay the full tab or he's going to prison. The uh, the uh, dropout then looks at you with a steely gaze and like shifts, like flexes his hand and showing that the contract is still under wraps. You re you think back to your conversation you of you have to share with him whether or not there is uh, danger present. Otherwise, you know, you still, you, like, you can't fuck each other over. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm gonna wander towards the front, kind of next to him and, and the guards. Okay. I'm like, like, right, right next to one of the guards. Okay. And did did he say they knew there was a data, or they just knew there was something shady going on? They were trying to determine whether or not there was Daedric influence in regards to the bar. They don't know for sure. The vigilance thought the vigilance of Sendar thought they were, and they sent them to court to sort of suss it out and receive payment upon confirmation of there actually being a de of a danger presence in the tavern. So they don't know for sure. Yeah. So I'm <laughs> I'm gonna lean uh up up to one of the guards and just just say by the way, do you know a good cra craftsman? I've I I would like to hire someone to to fix the door. I do feel bad about that, um, though. You may want to do something about the demon in the basement. Uh, and... Mar Mar Marcelo, look, well, uh, Marcelo then uh, goes wide-eyed and says, "How dare you!" Firstly. There are no Daedra in this in, in this establishment. And second, the, the only available places available to the public is this floor. Did you go into did you go into my storage room? Uh, it's a possibility, and I'll I'll take the the flack for that, though in your own situation, I don't think I'm the one they should be most worried about right now. The go uh, roll a persuasion check. I need you to roll two persuasion checks, one for each guard. Um, also, can I, I pull out the, the little 
things that I had. But okay. You want to use a different dice? Go ahead. Oh, I don't mind. <laughs> In my five. Uh, eight. 18. So that is a 23. That's a 23. All right. What's the second one? <laughs> it's a natural one. All right. So the first guard says, uh, so the second guard is like, how dare you? Marcelo has been a wonderful asset to this community. And in fact, catered my daughter's 10th, like 10th birthday. How dare you? And you admit to trespassing? We should take you to jail as well. This the first guard goes, hold on a second. Any levy of Dindra being present in the city is a serious accusation, one we should take seriously. The second guard is like hogwash. Marcelo has been an established member of our community, and who's this drifter who has the nerve to make accusations against? members of our citizenry how dare you and they continue to bicker back and forth uh, make, um the, what do you want to say in response well, well it's, i'm just gonna say then i suppose these don't mean anything either and and i pull out the like the the, the relics or whatever i i had pocketed like ritual relics. They they look at the uh, art the the ritualistic effigies, and their eyes widen. The uh, uh, says uh, it, the Marcelo then says a danger worshiper in my bar. And, and and then pulls out a knife and holds it and, and pulls out like like takes one of his beer bottles breaks it and holds it to you. I will purge this evil from our fair city. Uh, and um, uh, what do, you, do you have anything you want to say in response to that? Um, I'll, I'll just put my hands up and kind of back up a, a step and be like, I will, I will stay, stay here if if you know you want to to check it check it out even leave one of the guards with me i won't put up a fight just feel free to see for yourselves roll a persuasion check that's a nine five so that's a 14. all right that works the guards say All right. The guard that was, uh, the guard one says to the second one, you go downstairs and check. And then the guard, you know, moves past, opens the door, and heads down. Marcelo then says, I, I can't believe this. This is, this is so, this, I can't believe we are even, oh, even, Entertaining this idea that a a a danger worshiper who has these effigies, even entertaining the idea that we are going to believe this drifter over me, preposterous. A minute goes by, then another minute, then five, then ten. And 15. 30 minutes have passed so far. And the guard says, Where's where could he have gone? The blue the blue uh wizard, the blue, the dropout then says, I think I have my answer. Ask it, the 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 uh the um uh, the, the dropout then, uh, the, the, the guard one then says to the dropout, what do you mean by that? Dropout, dropout then says, 
me and my compatriots were attracted by the vigilance of Stendar to eke out whether or not there is a Daedric influence in this tavern. And the fact that your compatriot has been down there for a half hour with no return tells me everything I need to know. Here is a again, the, the again, dropout in the, red before. retro. Again, in retrospect, maybe sending a single man alone down to a potential Daedric entity was not the best call. Roll another persuasion check. <laughs> um, that's a seven. Uh, what is a get? What do you get? That's a seven. Um. The guard, it says, ugh. he looks at you with, like, some level of anger. Like, he's scared, frustrated, like he wants to swing at something, but he composes himself at the last second. He says, you're right. Mage, he says to the dropout. Fetch the rest of the guard. Uh, I'm going to go fetch the rest of the guard. Prevent this... Prevent this barkeep from from escaping. And the rest of you civilians should leave too. It's not safe here. Civilians all file out as Marcelo starts to become wi increasingly wide-eyed and unhinged, going, No! No! All I wanted, all I wanted was success. I failed so many times. I thought I was within my grasp. All I had to do was keep feeding it. The even the the uh, the guard left to go get the rest of the town guard. As the, once he leaves, the barkeep lunges at you with a with his with the with the um, broken beer bottle in hand. Catching you by surprise, and roll a d8. Eight? Yes, d8. Uh, that's an eight. You take eight points of damage, and you also take Ow. Co combat start, and you also take two points of lacerating damage on top of that, and we'll take that lacerating damage for the next two turns. Combat starts. The dropout uh, decides to fuck off and leave, and now it is just you and the barkeep in the tavern. What What do you want to do? Uh, uh too bad there's not a door. That, that would have been useful. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look at, like, look at your stat sheet and see what you think. You have unarmed strike, rapier, and a short bow. Yeah. Um, I'm... I'm gonna... turn and... Uh, whack him with the blunt of my raper. Basically attack him, but I don't want to kill him. I just want to, like, knock him out. Okay. Um, in that case, we're going to do, obviously, bludgeoning damage. Um, at, uh, just roll your normal rapier uh, damage, drop the piercing, and cut it. And, and, and like instead of two piercing, do minus two damage to whatever you roll. Send you. Okay. Do I have to roll roll the hit as well, or? No. Uh, just uh, no. roll 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 the hit and then roll for damage. Okay. Let's roll the hit first. What do you got? The hit. Oh, that is. Boy, that's an eight. 
That hits, believe it or not. Ah. Well, remember, okay. he's a civvy. He has a, that. He has a low that's, AC. That's true. That's true. Um. So that Four is damage. a six. Yeah. All right. So he's now at that. Ten. Uh, okay. Uh, he then takes another. He takes a swing at you. Uh, again. Uh, at, you take another two damage. So, so let me. So, like, first of all, let's. Uh, let me roll. Uh, um, roll the dodge. Roll the dodge. I, I rolled the dodge. You roll to see if it hits. Okay, fuck your AC. Uh, or rather, so what, I, what's I your... I rolled a seven. Yeah, Alright, what... Uh, or, or... My apologies, let me look at it. What's your AC? Uh, 14. Your AC is 14? Alright, he hits you. For uh, a D for a D four damage plus two lacerating, so there is now a second stack of lacerating damage. So for over the next uh, two turns, you're going to take four lacerating damage, and the last one you'll take two. So you're going to take so apply another four damage to total. So you will take. Um, so well, I'm probably just going to die right now then. How much health do you have? Here, I'll roll, um, I'm, roll, I'm rolling the damage. I'm rolling the damage. <laughs> All right. Well, that's two. Okay. At, you take five. At damage. the beginning of the turn, I. Okay. At the beginning of the whole turn, I had eight. Okay. Um. So then I took. Five, and then I take the two lacerating damage from this turn. No, no, you take five total. Right, that... Total, five total. He rolled a one. Five total. Okay. He rolled a one. You take four. It's five total. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna need you. So it's your turn. What you want to do? Um, I'm, I'm going to try to whack him again. All right. Roll for it. Uh, that's a 21. That, that hits. Roll for damage. Uh, five. Isn't that a seven? Uh, it's a seven, but you said minus two, right? Yeah, all right. Uh, that knocks him out. The barkeep, you hit the barkeep over the head, and he is knocked out. Whew. You now you now have two choices. You can either uh, wait for wait to wait for the um guards to come back, or you can just leave. Your job is done. You can, you, like, you can, uh, you can fuck off from the tavern and head back to the Imperial City and call your job quits. Eh, I might as well hang out and wait till the guards get back, make sure this is all, all sorted out. Alright. Uh, I'm, I'm just gonna head to the back of the bar and take a couple of his fancy drinks. All right. As you leave blood all over, as you bleed onto the floor <laughs> and and grab a drink, the uh, guard comes back with more with another guard and says, "What?" The more guards and says, "What happened?" And and what do you say? And and like because they see the um uh, barkeep there. 
both the you know guards uh, the, all the guards are up to up to date with what's happening so yeah I'd say as soon as he left he he attacked me I I defended myself I didn't kill him he's just unconscious do with him as you will the lead guard says leg it grab your bandages and, and patch this man up yeah uh, you get you basically get the you know you get you are currently being refilled to half health Hooray. The, the the guard the two guards then one guard grabs the bark grabs Marcelo and starts dragging him out the door and disappear into the night. The other uh, guard comes up to you and says, "Thank you for your service. I don't want to know why you were necessarily in this basement." But given the service you've done today, I'm happy to overlook any nefarious dealings, especially with someone of your employ. Broken clocks, I guess. We are probably going to have to have a little bit more manpower here. In the meantime, we're going to lock off the tavern and once morning comes, when the guard is, when when more people are on duty, we will come in and clean out that cellar. I recommend you make yourself scarce, Elf. I don't. We're going to finish up here. Don't come back. Your turn. That is entirely valid, I'd say, as I walk out the door with his bottle of vintage wine. <laughs> and with that, the uh, one shot is now done. I am also, <laughs> I, I, your rewards for finishing this one shot. And, you know, while the stories very well may shift and change and all of that. Uh, the rewards doesn't necessarily get to stick around. Um, please add, please add about uh, five hundred. Please add about five hundred gold to your to your um, character, Reed. As well as a um, pendant, or or and or a um, uh, uh, a uh, ring. Of minor sneak, which, if you would do me a solid of writing it out on your character sheet, is a ring that does the following. Tell me when you're ready. Uh, and that's that's not just a. Is that an item in D and D Beyond? No, it's not. It's an Arcane? item that I, it's no. an item that I'm completely making up. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. Add equipment. Add custom item. Yep. Where did that just go? It is a ring of minor sneak. Ring of minor sneak. It is Why a does sil that... Why does that keep disappearing? You know, I'll just open Notepad. Um, and cool. let me know when you're ready. Yeah. Okay. Uh, ready. The the ring of minor sneak is a silver band with a topaz gem on the top of it. And the enchantment is, oh, let me know when you're ready. Yeah. The enchantment is whenever you do a slight 
of uh, a, a not play man, a stealth, a, a, a stealth check. You you can also roll a D six. D six. A D six. And on a five or higher. Five or higher. You get a plus one to your sneak modifier for that roll. Okay. Actually, instead of a d6, can you make it a, a d8, please, and make the either a seven or an eight? Yeah. Yes, um, I will also, uh, for everybody listening, I will also be, I will also attempt to uh, write up some of the characters um, on character sheets of some sort, and I will, uh, I've been thinking of, like, as I go, making these characters and stuff, um, writing them out as NPCs and stuff that people will have fully available, I will be writing these down and uh, making them accessible at some point in the near future for everybody to play with. Um, Thank you, everybody, for watching It's and listening if you're on podcast. I appreciate everybody. Reed, thank you so much for partaking. Did you enjoy yourself this evening? I, I enjoyed myself greatly. Good, I'm glad. Um, I know that there a lot was some, of fun. <laughs> yeah, I know that there was some qualms about the checkerboard, but I like to think that I did a pretty good job with sort of making that temple. Yeah. Um, anywho, thank you, Reed, for your continued support. Uh, I've given my, my current homelessness, it is a huge benefit. I really appreciate it. Um, and, uh, if anybody else watching would like to participate in, uh, one of these, uh, you know, for the low, low cost of $3 anywhere, Patreon, Ko-Fi, Twitch, subs, Discord subs, whatever, uh, you can uh, be a part of these. It is a, it is a first come first serve, uh, four to five members usually, and um, we are also doing a community night. So those do, so to community D and D is basically uh, uh, will be next Tuesday. So this comes out on Friday at three uh, at three p.m. I believe, and. Um, you and uh that that will be in one two three four days same time 7 p.m um and the way that works is is uh it's first come first serve um and you know uh first come first serve with the addendum of you know i will once everybody throws their hat in the ring depending on people's ranking on the leaderboard uh will uh get you at we'll, we'll like we'll get you priority so check out the bounty board on the discord you know and make sure that you uh you update it every single day with, that whenever you drink whenever you drink water go outside and go for a walk and touch grass as well as socializing with others and stop isolating remember doing like like you know it's it's that those are there to help hold you accountable and if you decide to do fuck shit like getting all of the elden ring achievements you can also get crowns for that. Remember, the leaderboard is there as an incentive for everybody in the community to take better care of themselves. And have fun with a little light competition. So check out the bounty board and, you know, and make sure you go into the D&D chat and uh, sign up. You'll just need, a again, a level three character uh, using just the D&D handbook. That's it. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming to, for watching tonight's one shot. I appreciate you. Reed, uh, thank you so much for participating. Please feel free to uh, plug, please feel free to plug your, your stuff too. Just chill. Go for it. Uh, yeah, bas basically you can find Tantalus Studios on 
most of the social medias, there's Twitter, Dis, uh, Discord, or YouTube, um, Blue Sky are the main ones I'm working with, with right now. I fucking love Blue Sky, man. <laughs> uh, I am also working on a webcomic on on webtoon if you want to check that out it's called starstorm um page four is about to come out it's you know it, it's slow steady progress at my own rate but it, it's there nice. yeah ladies ladies and gentlemen thank you again for uh for watching uh you can uh Sign, you can you can uh, donate at himedia.gg slash perks with also a please down release out all of the perks you can get and uh, I will see you guys in the next one sending you to pre-recorded Evan hey thanks for watching if you want to you want to talk to me outside of this video outside of live streams or just be a join the community and be a part of it you can do so at himedia.gg slash discord discord links there we'd love to have you and Given the financial situation of the economy right now, I know this is a tall ask, but if you have the scratch to, to spare, please consider donating and becoming a supporter at himedia.gg slash tip. All of our perks are serviced through our Discord channel, including early access videos, exclusive videos, and more. Your generosity is a blessing, and a dollar a month is a boon to my bank account. Thank you so very much for watching. I appreciate you, and have great day.